Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Expert Age, a thought leadership initiative by Quadrant Knowledge Solutions. Uh, I am Sitaparna Roy. Welcome you all to Expert Age. So Expert Age is designed to bring together industry leaders and our experienced analysts to explore critical topics within various domains, offering valuable perspectives and knowledge sharing. So today we have an insightful discussion planning on the value stream management market. We are going to cover various aspects, including the growth potential and the importance of VSM in today's market. I'm delighted to introduce our esteemed panelist, Mr. Parker Ennis, who is the Product Marketing Director at Allstax. Uh, thank you, Parker, for taking time out and participating in today's discussion. Thank you, Sir Parna. Yeah. And alongside we have with us Mr. Nikhilesh Naik, who is the principal industry analyst at Quadrant Knowledge Solutions. Hi, Nikhilesh. Thanks for joining. Thank you, Sita uh, So without further ado, I would like to start the discussion on the value stream management market. Before that, I would like to start with a brief uh, introduction. With this, the complexity of software development is steadily increasing. Maintaining its significance across industries, irrespective of products or services offered. When we talk about organizations, there comes considerable complexities along with it. Delivery teams often grapple with deriving insights from the vast and intricate data generated by the delivery tools. So to cope up with this challenge, organizations nowadays are increasingly adopting value stream management to address these challenges to optimize their software delivery process. Implementing VSM enables organizations to gain a comprehensive view of their software delivery process, breaking down operational barriers and establishing connections between various processes, teams and tools. VSM empowers cross-functional collaboration, integrates governance, and process orchestrates and stimulates workflows. So though value stream management has been there in the market for the past few years and offering extensive benefits, we can see there is a limited awareness of value stream management among organizations. So Mark, so Parker, can you please mention with us some factors which contribute to the limited awareness of VSM as a technology in the market? And please, can you share with us some suggestions? Sure. Um, I think it's a, it's a good topic. And, and again, thank you for having me here today. Um, it's been wonderful to work with y'all and I was excited to, to join here on this podcast. Um, the first thing I always think of is the people aspect uh, of software and any, any sort of ideology or methodology in software, which is not always the first thing that other people think about. Um, and, and one of the uh, gaps that I notice with value stream management is a lot of times we're not thinking uh, about the flow of value, but instead we're thinking about the individual components throughout a value stream, right? So a lot of times you'll hear the comparison of value stream management uh, compared to you know traditional lean manufacturing um, practices from back in the day when we had warehouses and assembly lines that were way more prevalent. Um, and I think there's still some truth in looking from the you know the ideation. Uh, of something all the way to the end of something and when value would be you know, theoretically delivered to a customer. Um, but I think a lot of times we look at value and we don't break it down or, or look at how everything is interconnected. Um, and so that's one thing I wanted to start with in, in terms of adoption with, with value stream management. I think there is a lack of understanding um, on the complexity and, and what the definition of VSM is, right? We want to understand how value flows from the beginning of an idea all the way through to the end until a customer has that value in the hands. And a lot of times we hear people talking about just number of features or half, how fast a feature gets into the hand of someone. And of course, I'm talking specifically about software here, but um, I think that it's very difficult for people to understand. Uh, there's a broad set of things and practices and technologies that need to be um, uh, interpreted and need to be embedded within your value stream in order for you to understand really what's happening and analyze those things, right? So I think many organizations honestly struggle to understand what VSM truly is and how it can kind of differ from something like Agile or I have a, you know, my DevOps practices, et cetera. So I think there's a gap in the, the understanding. And, and, you know, I always say, you know, um, understanding begins with definition, right? And then there's that educational gap on how do we, how do we bridge that gap and really understand it? Um, and so that would be the first thing I'll say. And then I won't go too long because I want to make sure that uh, Nicholas has a chance to respond as well. But the next thing I think about when 
uh, there's a gap or a lack of understanding is that change is hard. And there is typically a cultural resistance or a cultural fear um, of what happens if we go and we change how we build our software today. What happens if we go and we incorporate this new tool or we start looking you know, across functionally across multiple teams? Um, then you start to kind of see what's really happening um, and, and you're able to connect those dots. But change is hard. And when you start asking people to do things differently, um, there can be resistance to that from a cultural aspect. And that's where that's where I would kind of start with it with the people. Well, Parker, I totally agree with you, you know, yeah. but the real issues uh, lies with uh, value stream management has been in the market for a very long time. I can, uh, you know, at the one stage call it as a parallel to DevOps, a uh, DevOps platform. But, you know, uh, despite being in the market for such a long time, it is a really alarming concern for the vendors and analysts like us equally to, you know, uh, address this challenge, uh, at least recognize it first. And then find some kind of solution for uh, you know increasing awareness about the VSM platform technology. Yep. Uh, you know, from the you know as an analyst working in this uh, uh, this industry vertical from a long time, or you know uh, through my conversation, which has happened with multiple vendors, uh, the CMOs, the CTOs, the practitioners of VSM technology, I have came to realize that uh, you know demonstration of actual value of value stream management platform. Maybe one of the solution, uh, you know, somewhere VSF technology is getting overshadowed by uh, yep. less, uh, I'll say less compatible or uh, some, you know, just monitoring tools which are uh, used by most of the organization. There is lack of awareness of VSM, which is preventing it from becoming one of the major, if not only the most important monitoring tool for getting insights from a SDLC management process, which is you know followed by most or all of organization. Somehow, if the vendors uh, you know identify a ways to demonstrate values or demonstrate the use case visibility of what actually value stream management platform is or can do, it will really help. Um, to give a basic example, what you know most of the big vendors present in the market do, they run. Mm -hmm. Center of Excellence initiatives. Now, yep. there is a general awareness that Center of Excellence is just to do research on, but Center of Excellence also works on uh, finding the compatibility, the, the yep. capability of that technology and different ways to promote it. Um, if I talk about AI, so, you know, multiple big organizations, there are initiatives to increase awareness about AI. Though we say that AI is a big tool, but uh, I mean, I mean, you you must be aware about the fact that, that actual adoption of AI is very limited, and most yep. of the organizations are working through COE to raise an awareness about it. Why can't we do the same for value stream management? I think this can be one way to increase awareness about value stream management. Second, I can say the no, I just have two options today. Uh, feedback mechanism. I know it sounds a bit uh, inappropriate, but uh, from the actual users, if the vendors or if the practitioners like us really get in starting, you know, uh, if uh, the actual users start giving feedback, the actual feedback, in a way, it will promote the technology on a larger scale. Uh, mm -hmm. Though the vendors are very limited in the market, the technology is evolving at a very slow rate, getting an actual feedback will always help the vendors and practitioners and analyst community like us to talk much, much and more about value stream management platform as a technology. Yep. So I think feedback mechanism is one thing, you know, which uh, uh, I think is the viable solution for enhancing awareness regarding value stream management platform and technology. Yeah, I think that's a great, uh, I think that's a great connection to, to what I said too, you know, and um, the other two things I was thinking of before you, before you spoke was, what about all of the tools that we already have in place today? How do we how do we incorporate VSM and kind of adopt VSM if it is different? And we have all these existing tools and processes that are in place. And then the other thing I was going to say is cross you know cross functional collaboration, which you you mentioned in another form with those feedback loops. And the cool thing about that is I think a center of excellence, like you mentioned, can address some of these issues. Right, a center of excellence will put the right people in place to know exactly what do we have in place, how can we best improve this. And incorporate VSM. They can also know who are my stakeholders, who are the people with the authority and the expertise or the subject ma subject matter expertise 
to help, um, you know, precipitate this across the organization and, and make sure that, or, or propagate, I think would be the better word across the organization, make sure that people know how to adopt this. So I think you're exactly right. A center of excellence kind of breaks down those silos that we see in organizations. And the larger your organization is, the more silos you may have, right? So I think that's a great, uh, a great thing to, uh, to point out there. Uh, I completely. One orthodox thing, and, uh, you know, uh, orthodox thing, which I came up with, but I'm not sure about if it could be a solution. So, you know, for different technologies, there are different matrices and measurement techniques. The, sure. You must be aware of DORA matrix. And there are different kind of measurement matrices and measurement techniques and measurement scale mm -hmm. for uh, you know, evaluating the compatibility or impact of uh, certain technologies. I am not sure if VSM has any kind of metrics or measurement techniques. So if we can come up with something or, you know, start working on that, it should actually give the end users the impact, the, you know, calculated or uh, the quantitative impact about the value stream management platform. That's yeah, very so. interesting, actually, um, because when you think of DevOps, right, um, you know, my background over a decade in, in the DevOps space and, um, it's something that is very close to my heart, but something I'm also very passionate about and and, and, and like because it's a, it was a hard problem and still is in some ways to solve. If you think 10 to 15 years ago, DevOps was in its infancy. Um, you may hear the term around the industry, but there weren't many DevOps managers. There weren't many DevOps engineers yet. It was still very uh, immature. Um, and now DevOps is everywhere. It's prevalent. We've got large DevOps platforms. You know, one of... Uh, uh, you know, I worked at GitLab for for some time and I worked at CloudBees for some time where we're consolidating things, right? People know that there's a problem to solve. We in DevOps was about what solving or, or solving for one main thing. How do we improve our people, our tools and our processes to deliver software better and faster? And that's kind of amorphous, right? It's not very specific. Uh, but then came along thought leaders like Nicole Forsgren and Jez, Jez Humble. Um, and these, uh, they're, they're publishing content, they're, um, they're co-authoring things, they're coming up with methodologies that work. And then what happened? We have Adora, right? We have the, the DevOps Research Institute, Institute, and you have Dora metrics that many people go straight to as a starting point. They think, you know what, I, 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 maybe it's been mandated. I've got to improve um, our engineering organization's productivity and efficiency. Um, we hear a lot about developer productivity and efficiency. How do I do that? Well, I read this awesome book. I heard from my coworker. There's these things called Dora metrics, where we can look at four key metrics and start to really understand how are our teams performing compared to what good looks like. Um, and that is now very, very prominent across our industry. And VSM and DevOps, you know, kind of live next to each other yeah. in that sense. And so we adopt that too. And so what you just said rang home, rang true to me, because I think that's great. We you know, within these value stream or value stream intelligence platforms, we have a multitude of ways that you can measure, um, analyze, and improve how your org engineering organization operates. But are there three or four or five that aren't these existing frameworks that we could go out and be prescriptive about and say, hey, look, if you measure these five things, we guarantee you that you're going to have a better understanding of where your organizations are and where you can go. And so I think what you said is very insightful there. Thanks, Parker. Uh, definitely, I agree with you, Parker and Nikhilesh. I think uh, VSM comes with various complexities and implementation challenges also. So implementing an effective value stream management requires uh, not only understanding the concepts, but I think also practically implementing skills, tools, and often cultural shifts within organizations. So this complexity can deter organizations from exploring VSM further or like investing in related solutions. So I think according to me, as organizations increasingly prioritize efficiency and agility, uh, awareness of VSM may grow as its benefits become more widely recognized and its implementation become more standardized. I think mm -hmm. it can work. And, and as we do more of this, right, I think it's also, you know, as um, whether you're on the analyst side and the research side, whether you're a practitioner, whether you're a manager or a leader or an executive, 
um, you know, we have to be stewards of our space in, in that sense and uh, and drive the awareness and make sure that people do know it's out there. There's also things like the the VSMC, the Value Stream Management uh, Consortium, right, where communities are being formed around these concepts and thought leaders can flourish and they can um, collaborate together. Um, and we can not just look at these problems in isolation, but look at them together and figure out how we can use all of our brains, right, and all of our resources to solve these problems. Yes, Parker, I definitely agree with you. I think it's a great idea of spreading the awareness of value stream management. Uh, so like, let's evolve into some other direction. So okay. I would like to say that there are numerous evolving technologies in the market today. Uh, like, for example, that is AI ML, big data, IoT, blockchain, etc. cetera. Uh, so Parker, I wanted to know your views on the scope of value stream management technology concerning them. Like you can share some views or suggestions if you have for that. Sure. Yeah, it's uh, whenever uh, AI ML comes up, you know, it's always a, uh, a tricky bag um, because we could talk forever um, about uh, AI ML, especially in regards to VSM. But I will say it's a it's a very interesting time to be here historically. Um, and I think we are just scratching the surface of what artificial intelligence and, and machine learning can do. And I think we're just now seeing the power of training uh, LLMs and those, you know, those language learning models or large learning models in a way that um, we can see the results in uh, the creativity that it produces. So I was thinking about this question uh, earlier before uh, when I woke up this morning and I thought about something I saw yesterday on Facebook. Uh, and, you know, I popped up my Facebook, you know, I checked my feed and all of a sudden I look at the text box and it says, write with AI. And I hadn't seen this yet. It was a new update. And so now we have gone from, you know, zero to, you can now just open your Facebook app, click, click write with AI and say, I want to be insightful. I want to be supportive. I want to be uh, question, you know, uh, or questioning and it'll just write your post for you and you can click go. So. The reason I preface with that is because I think one of the biggest uh, impacts that AI ML have in value stream today is um, really, really upstream, directly related to the developer and how they uh, wake up and carry out their day each day. And a lot of that is I log in, you know, I wake up, I log in, I open up my terminal, I check out a branch, I start writing some code, right? In a perfect world where there's not distractions. Um, and then I go to check in my code. And you may spend hours doing this each day. Um, what, you know, what about this world now where we have automated code, you know, all, basically auto code completion? Um, and that's where I'm seeing this very prevalent. The, the, the right with AI on Facebook was essentially someone training a model to go through different moods or, uh, you know, what I would say is like genres of AI co uh, code complete um, and giving you options. And so I thought I found that very interesting because I think that is the same kind of concept that developers will benefit from most greatly right now which is helping complete, helping suggest, helping kind of uh, be a checks and balances for developers um, more than anything else. Sure, can you go ask uh, AI to uh, completely write you a full stack or a RESTful application right now? You can, um, but would it be efficient in a way that will you have to go back and rewrite a lot of that or redo it? What if you kind of know what you wanna do, you have your plan, you know what your goals are, you may even know what you wanna measure, and then you have AI uh, help you and support you along that way and help you code complete. So I think that's where we are now. We're like, there's still a human as an input to this process right now, right? Um, we're still training LLMs and we're still learning kind of what the scope of AI ML can be. But what I do know is two really common um, wait states or two really common sore spots throughout the development process is code review and PR, uh, PR response time or PR reviews. And so if we can get developers to be able to get to a place where the code can be reviewed or even maybe reviewed by AI, right? And then we could get them to respond in PRs uh, as quick as possible, then we are improving productivity and efficiency. So I think using the power of AI ML is not just leaning on it to do everything for you, but using it to help support you um, as far as where we are today. Well, uh, not to sound pessimist here, 
But uh, you know what my opinion regarding AI is, uh, uh, let's take top 20% organizations present in the SDLC management uh, field. Mm-hmm. I'll say to adopt AI 200%, even to its minimal potency, it will yep. at least take 18 months to three years. For the top 20 vendors I'm talking about, I'm not even talking about the 80% vendors, which, uh, you know, make majority of the market. Top vendors are good. They have the strength. They have the budget, the R&D expenditure, and, and a good, of course, manpower. So for them, yeah. an efficient uh, vendors like the top 20%, I think it will take 18 months to three years to adopt AI 100% to its minimal potency. I know the, you know, uh, the power of AI to transform completely each and every technology related to SDLC management, including value stream management platform, is a very mm-hmm. great. But, uh, you know, uh, if you talk about in a practical sense about the adoption of AI at this stage, it is very minimal. And I'm yep. not talking about the top top vendors, I'm talking about the in general vendors. Yes, AI <clears throat> is in their roadmap, but, uh, you know, uh, actively working on adoption of AI from these uh, major, major majority of the vendors, it's still a very big step, uh, not just from the cost perspective, but also from the technology infrastructure perspective. Yep. So it will take a bit moment, but yes, I'm uh, you know pretty much sure about that in the coming span, and it will not be too long, the adoption of AI will going to drastically change value stream management platform to its fullest extent. But uh, at least for, uh, I'll say, two or three years, it will be, uh, the impact of AI will not be of that level. Like That is what uh, my opinion is. Yeah, I don't think you're far off there either, right? Especially, specifically when we're talking about value stream management, um, you know, what we're hearing in the market now, often your software engineering intelligence, uh, which I think we're going to hear more That's prominently nice. and and also links back to some of the awareness problem, I think, um, just the pure name, value stream management has a uh, somewhat of an antiquated feel to it. Uh, and, uh, you know, I can't, it's, that's a very abstract thing to say. I can't really put my finger on it, but I think that's part of it. So I think we're going to see the VSM nomenclature and, and naming change and evolve as well. And we're already starting to see that. But we talked about a few challenges earlier, right? Some of the education, the cross-functional collaboration, um, what metrics and how you measure, um, how, the fact that change is hard. You know what I think is really cool about what you just said, AI, as we as we keep moving along, will help with some of those challenges, right? It will help people standardize. It will help with education and training. It will help maybe a center of excellence work better together and know what's happening and who's doing what. Um, and it may even help you evaluate, um, you know, this tool will be good for this or, or this team or this organization and vice versa. So it may do some of that work that is very manual on us as humans today. Um, and lighten that load. So I think you're exactly right. The other thing I'll say is we are marketing, you know, uh, as a world, right? Not we as in you and I, but as a world, we are marketing AI on this, you know, 10 year roadmap. And we're saying like, you know, in two years, we're going to be like this and everything's going to be different in two years. But it's, I think we're marketing that 10 year roadmap as a two year roadmap or a three year roadmap. So I think you're right. It's going to take a little bit longer, <clears throat> excuse me, take a little bit longer to get where we want to be. But change is happening exponentially. Um, it almost feels like month by month, there's something new, um, including, you know, I, I found a tool that will generate music for me called Udio, U-D-I-O. And you can go in, you could say, make me a song, make me a song that sounds like uh, the Beatles, but also sounds like Jimmy Buffett. And it'll take that and it'll make you a song and it'll spit it out for you. And then you can go in and change it. It's, it's amazing. Um, and, and now, you know, that brings up some other things like ethical concerns and, you know, you know, safety and security stuff, but it does show how fast we are improving and how fast AI is starting to touch almost every part of our, you know, of, of how we think of software delivery and, and, and engineering organizations, but also our personal lives. So we're blending our professional in our, you know, our personal lives and AI is still in the center of both of those things. So I think it's going to be, it's going to be interesting. Yes, yeah, so, but uh, I must say generative AI is the exception. That yeah. generative AI is growing at an exponential, exponential rate. And I must say 
adoption of generative ai is different okay. i just wanted to clarify that good okay yeah that makes total sense so this like it was quite wonderful to receive such kind of insights from you and i think um, if i see from a very broad perspectives i think ai has brought a very big evolution in the market and mm -hmm. as parker you said that we are marketing ai but i think uh, in the coming years it will rule the market and it is also doing it now so uh, like i think uh, from my perspective mm -hmm. ai and machine learning can analyze vast data sets to predict bottleneck and optimize workflows which will uh, be a very big advantage for value stream management while iot yeah. can provide real time uh, for continuous monitoring and proactive decision making so i think uh, this will definitely help the value stream management market yeah. me too yeah and i'm glad you you did a really nice job wrapping us back uh, bringing us back down cuz i i wanted to make sure i stated a uh, you know, a level here in our conversation that didn't go too deep into things. And I think uh, I think we covered a lot of really cool, cool content today. So uh, I would like to conclude this session by thanking you, Parker and Nikhilesh, for such an engaging and informative discussion. Uh, your insights on the market and its significance have been incredibly valuable. And uh, to our audience, thank you for joining us on Expertage. We hope that you found this session insightful and thought provoking and stay tuned for more conversations with industry and leaders and experts. Until next time, keep exploring and stay ahead in the application development domain. Uh, thank you and goodbye. Thank you. Thank you.